the sound of One Clips Country. DCR, the channel you want to listen to. This is Terry Cleaver here at the Jock Readout for the Western Heights Open Day on the 11th of June 2011. We're here reporting for Dover Community Radio. Here with me, I have Doug Cubin, who is undertaking a film project here at the Jock Readout. Hello, Doug. How are you today? Uh, I'm great, thanks, Terry, and it's definitely a very nice sunny day. So, so you're undertaking a film up here. What exactly is it called? Uh, the, the film's called The Fort. Uh, and, and as you can guess from the name, it's uh, you know based around uh, the fort, the, the drop redoubt here, uh, which is obviously a type of fort, and um, it's uh, set in World War Two, and uh, the latter stages, and is uh, a film which is a feature film, so it's sort of one hour twenty approximately, that uh, is based around these German soldiers who take refuge in the fort, and it's about their experiences you know, over that one night, and, uh, uh, and it's sort of all encompassing inside and outside the fort as well in fact will be a fair bit of shooting so what made you choose to do that as a storyline the, s- the storyline came from i wrote it quite a long time ago in fact uh the, the scripts um because I'm, I'm doing quite a few of the things on this film i wrote the script and and i'm producing the film and, and i'm actually directing as well so um, although I didn't expect the producing and directing bit at first, I wrote it and I thought I did like the idea, but I didn't have the drop redoubt in mind. Uh, I didn't know about it, never heard of it, and it's purely by accident. Um, my brother, who's a local, uh, just lives locally and um, sort of often comes up for a walk with the family around this area, around the Western Heights, and he, caught, he just met someone who was locking up here, who happened to be a member of the Western Heights Preservation Society. And uh, and he just asked, you know, oh, is there something inside there that we can have a look? And uh, and it sort of snowballed from there. Really, I got a, a sort of invite to come and have a look around. And when as soon as I saw it, I thought, you know, this fort, this was absolutely made for the script. It was as if you know I'd written the script based around something I, I hadn't even seen. So it was uh, quite quite um, miraculous, almost really, to actually see the exact tunnels and corridors that I had in mind, and also the external sort of. Um, battlement shall we say for want of a uh, better word but, but the whole construction is quite unique you know it's um, the, the, the way that um, fort actually looks and what it's what it was for and, and of course the grand shaft as well it's, you know the three stairs going down to the, the beach that, that, that's just that's awesome that's that's great that's uh, filmography fodder that is <laughs> you know that's you know we can't wait to uh, particularly get on that bit um, and just just on the Western Heights Preservation Society, you know they've they've been absolutely fantastic, you know supporting the project. Uh, you know people like Paul Wells and Mandy Wall, they're, they're, they're just uh, fillied and uh, really supporting the project and, and helping us. And whenever we come down here, you know ask questions, and they're doing a great job, uh, purely volunteering, to uh, you know clean up the fort, look after it, you know, and, and just do uh, lots of great work here. So you know all due credit to them. The film is made, you know, with with a lot of their help. So, um, what sort of costumes are going to be used in the film, and the backdrops? How are they going to be used throughout it? Uh, the in terms of the costumes, there will be uh, uh, World War Two. They're German soldiers. Um, they're late in the war. They're sort of what you might call normal Wehrmacht sort of soldiers. Uh, you know, they're sort of veteran uh, old guard soldiers, and. Um, so, so that they'll have pretty, they'll have pretty standard kit. It was late in the war, so really they kind of wore um, whatever they could get their hands on to a degree, or indeed what they felt comfortable in or what they liked. So they may change as a bit. Some of the detail we've changed because um, a lot of soldiers uh, like to have their own way of wearing the webbing, for example, the sort of straps and the uh, the way they carried the, the gun. They would alter and they were slightly customised one of them is a sniper and he slightly customised his, his rifle uh, so, so a lot of that stuff is um, uh, quite unique to each of the characters, there's four main characters in, in the fort and uh, you know I hope you know that, that will bring a lot of the depth of those characters um, out and, and some of their characters have shown actually what they wear in terms of the backdrop uh, and the general scenery it is very much uh, going to be left uh, quite raw in terms of the fort you know the film's called the fort, and it's about the fort. Uh, it's it's it, and it's those you know Germans sort of taking refuge there, and uh, and, and and experiencing this sort of one night, and um, 
I won't see any more than that. <laughs> um, you know, who lives, who dies, or anything. Um, you know, let's just leave it there. Uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah, the backdrop. So it's a lot of. There's some great. Um, I think you've already been in to see it, haven't you? Inside, and there's some great. Uh, you know, long dark corridors and tunnels and staircases just going down into oblivion sort of thing. And then of course there's the the grand shaft itself, the uh, the, the the staircase, um, which is uh, just a fantastic uh, place to shoot. Um, and, uh, and so a lot of the backdrop will be these local, you know, sites, you know, right above Dover. You know, I, th- I think it'll look great on, on screen. So how did you actually go about um, researching the uh, locations and starting the filming off with production and so forth? I had kind of um, not necessarily shelved the script, but put it to one side with other um, uh, bits of work I was working on. I'm a member of the producers group, 75 Productions, at the Phoenix Media Arts Centre in Leicester. Right, yeah. And I joined them really to help myself understand better how to shoot a feature film and uh, how to develop characters in the writing, etc. etc. So I, I sort of went on there because I hadn't done anything like this before, not, not a full okay. feature. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I'd kind of shelved it really, that, that particular script, and, and worked on a few others. Um, I worked on a, sh- a short um, film uh, with the main cameraman who's in this, Victor Gonzalez, um, who's, who's in charge of the camera units uh, in this film, and uh, he's in the producers group as well. And and uh, and so that sort of education, I got a lot, of, you know, I got a lot of great information from that. And so uh, and then one day coming down here and then coming across <laughs> this, you know, my brother saying, oh, you know, you should look at this. This is quite good. He's seen he's seen the script. He said, I showed it to him. And, uh, but nothing really had come up to scratch with location. Mm. I've looked at a few places, uh, again, a few years back, but because it didn't really work out, uh, you know, I thought, um, you know, maybe there isn't exactly what I wanted because there's just no budget. There, there's no budget for filming. Mm. Uh, it's, fer- well, it's very, very difficult unless you've got a sort of famous name attached or, you know, you, you, you've just got the backers there, then, then it's difficult. Uh, so making the scenes, you know, making, constructing um, the tunnels and the scenes, how I envisaged they looked, would have been enormously, prohibitively expensive. Um, so, uh, so seeing seeing this and then seeing the location um, kind of made it fit into place. Really, it was the, it was the main piece of the puzzle. So, um, would there be any chance for any locals to get involved with the film? Yeah, well, d- uh, definitely. You know, as as a as a as a what they call a low no. Uh, budget film um, so you know it's a group of people we're, we've all got together uh, to to, um, to to work on on this feature uh, everyone is kind of volunteering their time and uh, in fact I've just come via Hearn Bay because there's a guy there who had a load of props from World War Two and offered them very kindly um, uh, thanks Pete you know who you are um, <laughs> and you know and he offered up uh, some of his sort of collection of World War Two memorabilia, which really fit into the script and into the film, and also some um, uh, help with that. And then, uh, and then when we when we actually you know, start the main filming and come here and actually get the the entire crew mm-hmm. together and start filming, you know, we do always need help. And indeed, and not just the film itself, but the drop redoubt itself, of course, can always need volunteers. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, it's, uh, it's it's I think it's sort of five pounds to join, I think something like that a year. So it's it's, it's a normal amount of money. Um, but uh, to, to volunteer to help uh, with the Western Heights Preservation Society with the work they do, sort of tidying up and clearing and, and indeed removing any graffiti, which has been a, an issue recently, um, you know, to help then. Therefore, that means that's helping the film, oh, yeah, you see, yeah. because, uh, you know, to, to do that is just great. If there's no litter in the in the sort of ditches and, and that sort of thing, then that, that means we don't have to um, sort of go about tidying up and, and things like that. We can just concentrate on the filming. You know, so um, like I said, you know, without the Preservation Society, uh, we couldn't make the film. And indeed, Ingrid Heritage, of course, who, who literally just uh, last week gave the sort of final confirmation, you know, of permission. <laughs> you know, I actually got it, saying yes, that's, and that's fantastic. So, you know, thanks to English Heritage as well, you know, uh, for, for supporting this project. You know, it's an all-round, you know, local um, support uh, group. You know, who, who are making sure that. Uh, that we have a, a good start, at least, in getting this rolling. It uh, won't be anyone else's fault if it doesn't work, <laughs> it'll be mine. <laughs> so have you got um, tight deadlines with the filming when you're doing production on site here? Uh, not not particularly. I mean, uh, oh, you can hear the, the 
of bagpipes in the background there possibly I don't know <laughs> but uh, it's all happening here um, do I have tight deadlines I would I would love to get the film completed mm. by the end of next year um, I would realistically it probably looks like it's going to be early uh, yeah so it's may, maybe maybe early in the, the following year sort of uh, 13 but but I think 12 is possible I think 2012 20 12, of course as long as the world doesn't end and that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's one thing we have to be wary of but uh, I haven't built that into my contingency plans you could include that in the film well actually. I could we could just have the camera rolling as this sort of cataclysmic end and there it is of course there'd be no one left to watch it <laughs> but it'd be a good ending <laughs> No, so so yeah. Talking of um, releasing of the film, there. Yeah. How about are you going to go about releasing it? It's it's funny. I, I just attended a talk by someone called Reese Davis, who, who released a, his he's, uh, he released his uh, first feature, which uh, went to DVD, uh, went on to DVD, and uh, called Zombie Undead. And uh, he's a sort of horror uh, fanatic, but it, it's a great film, and uh, it's in HMV and all that kind of thing. And he gave a talk on this very aspect, and um, and he's been through the whole process, and, and sort of certainly to a degree sort of mentored my uh, what I've been doing here. And indeed, I've uh, read a lot of books on the subject. So at the end of the day, it'd be great to uh, have the film in cinemas. Of course, it would. I think once we get once we start shooting and, and really get some things in, the, as they say, in the can, and we got some uh, bits together, and we've stylized it how we want, because it's shot in a very particular style. Right, yeah. Okay, it's not. Mm. You know, people will. I mean, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But let's say it's it's quite. It's a different style the way it's shot, and um, and then once that's we we have those pieces put together, we're going to uh, you know approach certain organisations and, and hopefully you know that distribution will take place in some form or another uh, but you know what we think about right now mm. is just to have a really great uh, film you have a really professional film at the end of the day you know a great feature film which goes for one hour 20 minutes and you know you never want to you don't mind leaving for 15 minutes to <laughs> stock up on popcorn basically you uh, you know you just don't want to leave it really so and that's our that's our our goal that's everyone in the crew's goal um, you know we've all watched thousands of movies between us mm. and and uh, we've all work, worked on in some shape or form uh, various bits of film in fact one of the guys helping with casting uh, was in Tomb Raider 2 and uh, another guy was um, I think he had a fight with Angelina Jolie in that and uh, obviously he lost mm. you know, but obviously, yeah. obviously yeah. Uh, I mean you would <laughs> but um, and then uh, another guy uh, I think he's in, he was in The Dark Knight um, so there's a bit of professional underlying professionalism there where, you know, where people worked on big, big feature productions, and and that sort of input from all these, uh, you know, very generous people um, really can help us uh, you know, hopefully make the right decisions and, and come up with a great production at the end of the day. So, what would you say to people who would like to see the film when it's finished? One thing to that's important to note is that we will have a whole um, marketing campaign as, uh, and it was, and it's just starting. Uh, there's a there's a Twitter uh, account called um, Fort Movie, so at Fort Movie that you can follow, and uh, and there's uh, there's a Facebook group that will be um, public and out there where you can see more, uh, and um, and actually just just on the Twitter point, what what I'm going to be doing in that is as we're shooting and as we're producing um, film and getting getting stuff on film. You know, I'm, I'm going to be firing out tweets and saying, look, you know, we've just done this bit or we've just done that or we learned this or found out that, you know. So I'm hoping to bring people along for a ride in the production process, in fact, uh, and so uh, and, and really give as much information up front so everyone knows, OK, you know, how well, where can I go and see it? You know, how can I go and see it? Because, kind of, of course, that's within my interest <laughs> to make sure people know how to see it. And and, uh, and actually, whether it's on, uh, it'll definitely be on DVD, that's, that's for sure. Right. Definitely, that, that's for sure. That will happen no matter what. Um, but how, you know, and with what distributor and all that sort of thing, uh, will be will be discussed as we go along. You know, we're right at the beginning. We're in pre-production, so you know, we've we've got those discussions really to take place. So decisions will be made later on. And finally, how do you feel actually doing the film here? How does it make you feel bringing it from inception to final completion when it's done? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously inception. <laughs> a good film word. Um, the um, 
Um, well, it's great. I mean, obviously, because what, what happens is you, you write a script and you write, you write, you draw up the, all these characters, and I have very deep uh, profiles of, of the characters. You know, I talk about where they went to school and where they lived, if they moved house, and all this sort of thing. And these things aren't even really shown that much in the film, but they help build a very rich character. So when you do that and describe the scenes and the locations, and have an idea already of the kind of angles that you want to shoot at, and that and camera positions and things like that, and then and then suddenly you come across and see, and you can actually visualize the thing instantly and say wow you know this is where the camera's going to go and i'm going to get that i mean it is it is quite amazing really when you when you find a location as amazing the drop it out simple as that i mean i i think this is uh, and i'm really even more glad i called it the fort i always called it the <laughs> fort but now i know i know yes okay this this the fort you know to me is one of the characters is one of the protagonists in the film and uh, so you know and uh, and again i won't say any more than that but <laughs> But you know, yes, it's it's fantastic to be here and to see it uh, coming alive. Um, it's it's going to be, and we all can't, we just can't wait to start filming. And uh, there's a big crew of us together now, and lots of actors, so can't wait to get started. Thanks very much, Doug. That's great. No, thank you thank very you. much, Terry. Thank <laughs> you. It's good. Thank you very much. The sound of Wycliffe's country. DCR, the channel you want to listen to.